hope everyone is webby <coughs> hi everyone it's webby again welcome back to another video um, today is going to be another tutorial video uh, here at my work uh, and i'm going to show you how to set up and use the new forward pass app uh, that's just been released here in australia um, so there's several functions that you can use uh, obviously from your smartphone uh, so it is available from both apple and android phones uh, and you basically just uh, download the app uh, from either the App Store uh, or the Google Play Store. So I'll run you through, uh, while we're sitting down, just some of the functions that the app uh, actually gives you with your car. Uh, then we'll go outside and we'll test it out, I'll show you how to set it up uh, fully uh, and how to get the best use out of the app um, with your particular car. Uh, so to start off with, I'll run you through uh, some of the features that you get with the app. Uh, so the one that a lot of people will use or mostly use is going to be things like remote start uh, So this is basically once you set the app up You can start your car or your van or Ranger or whatever it might be um, Simply by opening up the app uh, choosing your vehicle and pressing the engine stop start button um, That will obviously allow you to start your car uh, Worth noting that it only works on cars with an automatic gearbox um, and the car has to be obviously in park to be able to do this and the bonnet has to be fully shut as well and so are the, the couple of provisos there with it so uh, just for safety point of view uh, the next feature that you might use uh, which is quite a handy one is that it allows you to remotely lock and unlock your car um, so if you walked away from your car and you think oh did i lock it um, a simple press of the button on the app will actually lock your car for you uh, which is quite handy um, the other thing it could be handy for is if you're out shopping with a friend or your other half and you've gone to separate shops and they want to go and put some uh, shopping back in the car, they don't need the key, you can actually remotely open it from the app, they can put the stuff in the car, let you know that they've uh, done it and then you can lock the car again. Uh, so that's actually quite a handy feature. So with the, the remote locking, it will only lock your doors and your tailgate if you've got a sunroof on your vehicle and you've left it open, it won't shut your sunroof, so that's something important just to uh, be mindful of. Uh, you also get live traffic updates. So if you've got built-in satellite navigation on your SYNC 3 system, um, it will also give you live traffic updates as well. Um, but I can say it is important you've got built-in sat-nav on your car. Um, so worth noting. You also get a vehicle locator as well. Um, so just by using sort of the drop pin like you get in sort of Google Maps or Apple Maps uh, will actually tell you exactly where your car's parked. Um, handy if you've got a bad memory like me and you can't remember where you've parked your car. Uh, now vehicle status is another feature. Um, so that will give you things like how much fuel you've got left in your car, what your tyre pressures are, if your car's fitted with a tyre pressure monitor system, um, how many um, kilometres your car's actually travelled, uh, that type of thing. Uh, and then the last one is vehicle health alerts. Uh, so that will give you things like if you're running low on sort of washer fluid or something like that. So it's just little mini uh, maintenance items. So they're all handy little items to have on your car. Um, some you'll probably use more than others, I guess, uh, but none, nonetheless, they're, uh, they're good to, you, to use. Um, that's important to note with this system. It's only just becoming available on cars coming into Australia. Um, so what I'm gonna do is actually put the latest models in the description below so you can actually tell whether your car uh, has this system. Um, there is still some functionality if you've got a car that hasn't got the embedded modem uh, for the full system um, and again I'm going to show you a little bit later in the video what you get on an older car versus what you get on a newer car. Obviously the newer cars get the full experience um, and like I said I'll put a list of all the current cars uh, below. But all new cars coming out from now on will basically get this system. Uh, so the new Escape that comes out later this year, uh, the new Ford Puma, uh, and then any updates that come forward. Um, so like I say, the Ranger and the Everest are coming out sort of in a couple of weeks. Uh, the Transit Custom has already arrived, uh, which is the vehicle we're going to be looking at today. Um, so anything new coming out from sort of pretty much now onwards, as long as you've got the correct uh, model year, then you'll have the full pass connect the full system uh, built into your car. So the system works by having a modem um, built into your car with a SIM card. Uh, it's what they call a global modem. So it doesn't matter where you are in the world, it 
doesn't matter which network your phone is on, so you could be Telstra, Optus, Vodafone, whatever. Um, it will still talk to each other, it doesn't matter what network your phone's on. Uh, so don't panic about that quite yet. Um, so they basically talk to each other via cellular data. You press a button on your phone, sends a signal to the, uh, to the carrier, and then it sends it straight to your car and activates whatever function you've asked it to do. I'm going to say there are functions that older cars can't do obviously because they haven't got the modem built in uh, and the modem isn't retrofitable uh, so you can't go and put it into an older car because it's all hardware based. So if you've got an older vehicle that hasn't got the new modem built into it uh, there are still some functions you, can, functions you can use from the app. Um, so you can do things like call roadside assistance, um, you can actually use it to book a service um, you can also look at your service history as well because once you put the vehicle details in if your car's been serviced at a Ford dealership um, it will actually show which dealership's done it it will show the, uh, like the job number if you like, the date, the mileage um, so if you ever lose your service history book it's actually a good backup um, for that although obviously you don't rely on it too much um, because you don't want to sort of uh, yeah, say don't rely on it so with the service history, um, we've according to Ford, this vehicle is from 2017 onwards. Uh, although I did try it on a 2016 car and it appeared to do the same as well. So um, maybe it goes back further than they think. Um, but it will also show you manual as well. So if you've lost your owner's guide, you'll be able to look on the app as well. Um, and you know, if you need to sort of look something up in the index and find something out about your car, uh, that'll be on the app too, which is quite handy. Uh, and there's also tutorial videos on how to to learn certain things about your car. Um, so there's actually quite a lot of stuff, it's not just about the whole locking, unlocking situation. Um, now you're thinking, is this gonna cost me anything? Uh, well, the simple answer to that is actually no. Um, it comes standard, as I say, with all the new cars uh, coming into the country fairly soon, so it doesn't cost you anything. Um, and again, obviously for the same for, for older vehicles as well. Uh, the live update side of it, that's actually, um, it is a subscription, but you get it free for three years when you purchase a brand new car. Um, at the moment, they Ford haven't told us what the ongoing cost is going to be after that, uh, or whether there will be a cost. Um, but I guess as cars get older, that information will come out from Ford Australia. So that's a little bit of a summary of what you can and can't do uh, with the actual app itself. Um, but what I'll run through now is just a bit of a quick setup of how to get it started. Um, and then we'll go outside and I'll show you how to link a car up and what features you can and can't do with the car itself. Um, so yeah, first of all, we'll have a look at how to set up the app and then we'll go and have a look at the car. So I've got my iPad here. Uh, I've done it on the iPad so it's just a bit of a bigger screen. So here we can see the Ford Pass app that I've already downloaded. Uh, so we just click on it uh, to open it up. Uh, as long as you can see, if you haven't got an account, you can just press on that button uh, and that will take you to the page where you actually create yourself uh, an account. Uh, it's pretty straightforward, as you can see, uh, you just put in some details. Once you've put in your email, that'll actually be uh, in this section here, you'll then get sent a verification code which you put in, and then you put in a password uh, that you choose as well. Uh, just accept the terms and conditions, and then you click on next, and then it will take you through the final stages of actually opening up an account. Uh, now I've already got an account, uh, obviously because I've been testing this out, so I'll just pop my details in. So now I've logged into the app, uh, it's kind of brought me to this home page. Um, and what you can see, you've got some buttons at the bottom, um, which when I go around the car in a moment, uh, I'll show you how each function works. Um, so as you can see, I've already got a, a Ford Mondeo in here, which I've put in previously. Um, and I wanted to put that in just so I can show you what happens with existing vehicles. Uh, as well as um, sort of new brand new cars. Um, so what you can do, you can put more than one car in. So if we tap on the Mondeo there, so it shows that that's the car I'm currently using, but you can add another vehicle. Uh, that's what we're gonna do shortly when we go outside and show you actually how to add the vehicle um, because part of this, the system of setting up um, is not just using the app, but it's also, um, you have to activate uh, the forward pass inside the car itself. Uh, but let's just have a, a quick look at this car for now. So we're using an older car. Uh, so if we click on vehicle details, um, you can do things like um, choose your preferred dealer. 
Um, so where you want to sort of take it for regular servicing, that type of thing. Uh, under the service history um, option, as I was mentioned earlier, every time you go for a service, it registers, uh, like I say, the date, the actual kilometers that the service was done at. Uh, so it's a really handy sort of tool to have um, for future reference um, to know sort of when you've done your servicing. So if I just click into one of these, so what it will show you is you can see uh, the date when the service was performed and which dealer did it. Uh, the RO number, uh, that's um, sort of like the job number if you like that the dealership uses. Uh, and then down the bottom, the actual kilometres the job was performed at. Um, so it's a really nice uh, bit of information to have. And as you can see, uh, on every single one of them, it's recorded the exact mileage. Um, so every time the car's been serviced, um, good to see that this one's been serviced at Ford all the time. Um, you can then, in the glove box section, uh, this particular car was unregistered, but you can put in your registration number. If it's a newer vehicle, uh, it will tell you when your, um, your new vehicle warranty expires, and it also shows your chassis number. Under vehicle support, um, as I said earlier, you've got some how-to videos, um, so you can just click into that section there. Uh, it will actually take you to YouTube. Um, to the Ford Australia uh, YouTube channel um, and then you've got a few different videos there um, some of these are actually very similar to the videos I've made myself um, so yeah you can uh, have a look there you can look up things like any health alerts um, so they're obviously specific to your type of car and there's different categories uh, that you can check up you can then look at uh, the sync system as well um, so looking at obviously the sync free um, system that this works with in your car, how to actually sort of operate the whole sync system, uh, which is always nice to sort of have a bit of a refresher on. If we go into your own vehicle, now with an older vehicle, what you have to do is actually use a USB cable and plug your phone in as it says there. Uh, and obviously you have to make sure it's uh, in park and running at the same time. So it's fairly straightforward, just go into the sync system uh, and then it will actually uh, transfer the information from the car into your app to store there. Uh, and then as I mentioned earlier, you also got a PDF copy or digital copy um, of your actual owner's guide for your car, which is really handy. So if you've ever lost it or you just haven't got it on you, um, that's always a good feature to have. Um, so coming back down to the bottom, actually sorry, so looking at the top right hand corner, You've also got the roadside assistance button as well. Uh, so as we know, with Ford cars, uh, you get 12 months of roadside assistance automatically, uh, whichever state you live in in Australia. And then every time you come to Ford um, for your servicing, you get an additional 12 months uh, roadside assistance, uh, which takes you up to seven years or 105,000 kilometers, whichever's first. Um, so there's the telephone number uh, for whichever state you live in. Um, so yeah, just coming back down the bottom, you've got your find. Um, I'm going to say this iPad isn't obviously got a cellular data connection, so we're just running Wi-Fi. But if you're using your phone, uh, the map section is just there, so it'll show you where your car is. But then it also gives you options of trying to find uh, certain points of interest. Um, so if you just wanted to sort of go and grab yourself a coffee, if you're looking for fuel, you can just tap on the particular icon, um, and then that will give you a list of um, establishments that will so your coffee will give you fuel. You then get details about your account. Uh, so as you can see, it shows my account details there. You can edit your preferences, you can look at messages. Um, so it's really, really self-explanatory. Um, not much different to most apps you get on your phone these days. And then if you click on more, um, you've got a few more guides. Um, you can actually contact Ford as well uh, if you're struggling with anything. Um, but you can do things like change your password, um, change your username, bits and pieces like that. Um, or if maybe you're thinking of changing your car, uh, you can actually go straight to the Ford website um, and look at sort of offers on new cars. Uh, and there you can see Ford have updated their website um, and given you some information about the Ford Pass system. So that's all the classroom part of the video done. Um, what I'll do now is we'll go outside and find, um, so I've got a transit custom to actually show you around on how to get things working. Uh, so I'll go and grab the keys, we'll jump in the car, uh, and I'll go and show you how to set it up and get it using once you're in your car.
So here we are outside now, uh, and as you can see, I've got a Transit Custom behind me. Uh, so this is the car I'm gonna add on to the app, just to show you some of the features that we can use um, to control your car. Uh, but first of all, I need to actually add the vehicle into the app. Uh, so there's a couple of steps I need to do just before we can get things going. So just before we actually get into the process of adding the vehicle uh, to the app, I'm just gonna go into the settings on the Sync 3 system uh, and just make sure that the, uh, the Ford Pass Connect systems are actually turned on. Uh, so we just go into settings, uh, slide across, uh, and there we go, the Ford Pass Connect app is there. So we click on that, go into the connectivity settings, uh, and then we just turn on the update there, continue. And then make sure we put on send vehicle data. And we're all set, ready to add the car. All right, so I've come to the page on the app where you can actually add vehicles. Uh, so all we do is we click on the car at the top and then come down here and click add vehicle. Okay, so that brings us to this page here. And as you can see, it's asking us uh, to put the VIN number in. But what you can do is hit on the little camera button. There you go. Uh, and it brings up that. And then what you can do, I don't know how well you'll see this, uh, is it will actually scan the VIN number from the barcode um, that you can just see there uh, on the inside door, uh, driver's door of the vehicle. Um, so there you go. So that's actually now um, added the van. And what you can do is it says there, you can give the each vehicle a name. So I don't know, if you've got a couple of different cars, uh, then obviously you can you know, sort of just label them separately. Okay, you don't have to give it a name, uh, I've chosen not to. Uh, but there you go, so that's now um, added. Uh, but what you need to do uh, is actually activate the vehicle. Uh, so we click on vehicle details, and then you have to go to activate vehicle. Okay, so the next step uh, is you go back into your car and start the engine, and then you'll get a confirmation um, notification on your SatNav system, uh, which you just click on to uh, complete the process. So here you go, this is the message you get on your screen. Um, so it just says you want to confirm the association of this particular car into my account. Uh, so we just click on yes. And so this is as, as how easy it is and to actually set it up. So when we come back to the app itself, there you go, so I've now got a notification, vehicle authorization is complete. So that means that this particular car that I'm sat in now that I've added uh, will now be uh, in the app. So if we go back home, there you go, it takes a few seconds just to sort itself out. If we go, so, so now we've gone to the vehicle detail section. So now it's showing some of the information from the car. Uh, so there you go, it's giving things like you know, the range of fuel in the tank. Uh, and it actually shows you a, a graph of the fuel gauge itself. Uh, and then it also shows how many kilometers the vehicle's actually traveled. Uh, then down just below that, we can actually find our location. So using our GPS, and sell your data signals, it tells you exactly where the vehicle is. Uh, if we zoom out slightly, there you can go. That's uh, so where you can see. Um, so Prince's Highway in Berwick, I'm just down the back of the yard, uh, the dealership, and uh, so it's actually located the vehicle very accurately. Uh, so if we come back and go bit down a little bit more, um, so that then shows you things like the tire pressure monitor that this vehicle's got. Uh, not obviously every vehicle's got a tire pressure monitor, um, but those that have, um, you'll be able to see your tire pressures come up on the app. Um, if you go into vehicle details, uh, so it shows you uh, the model of the vehicle. Uh, you can also put your registration number in. It will show you the warranty expiry date once the vehicle has been registered. Uh, then we've got the chassis number and the mileage again. Uh, if we come back uh, to here again, if you go to vehicle support, uh, so you've got a section there, um, so there's some videos you can look up. Um, 
you can look up sort of what your different health alerts mean. Um, so there's lots of different things there on the support page owner's manual. Um, so it's, it's actually pretty uh, sort of thorough. There's quite a lot in there. With the subscriptions ones, this is uh, this is quite interesting. As I said earlier, part of the package is you get three years worth of live traffic updates included um, in the app itself or including the vehicle. Now what's going to happen after that three years has passed, we don't quite know yet. Ford haven't actually uh, announced what's going to happen. Uh, but I suspect it will either be you can pay a fee and continue the subscription or you can just let it lapse. Uh, like I say, we're not too sure at this stage. Um, but obviously at some point Ford will actually make an announcement uh, as to what they're going to do with that. Um, now the other thing you can do up here, you can click on your roadside assist button. Um, so if you have a breakdown, run out of fuel uh, or whatever, uh, say so 24 hours, 7 days a week, you can literally just hit that blue button in the middle uh, and call roadside assistance. Uh, and that doesn't matter which state you're in in Australia, uh, they're covered throughout the whole country. Uh, so again, back to uh, sort of the home page, and now you can see if I click the top button, it gives me a choice of which car I want to control. Uh, so the blue one obviously highlighted is the Transit Custom that we're sat in uh, at the moment. Uh, going to find, um, so that's just giving you options if you, know, if you wanted to find a fuel station, try and find a car park, a coffee shop, um, then you've got options within that as well. If you press your account button, um, so this is just saying, giving you sort of messages that this vehicle has now been authorised uh, in the account itself. We can get rid of that message. Uh, so there's no messages there anymore. Uh, then on the more button, um, again there's just guides for your car or you can just go straight to the Ford website um, if you've got any other information that you need to know. Um, so yeah, it's pretty easy to get everything set up. Um, so that's the app side of things. Um, so yeah, it's quite easy. Um, so what I'll do now is I'll get out the car uh, and I'll give you a quick demonstration of um, starting, locking and unlocking the car. Uh, just so you can see how simple and easy the process is. So we've now got the buttons here. Um, so these are the obvious ones. Stop and start the engine is a big one in the middle. Uh, and then you've got the lock and unlock buttons to either side. So all we actually need to do is press and hold the start button. Um, it takes a few seconds because it's got to send a signal from the phone to the server uh, and then the server back to the car. Uh, so let's press the button. So like I say, you just press and hold it. And then in a few seconds time, we'll actually hear the vehicle, um, the, the engine start up. So this is actually particularly good um, if you're some sort of person that isn't able to put their car in a the garage. There you go, started up already. That didn't take long at all. Um, and the nice thing about it is, um, if you've left the air conditioning on or heater on, um, when you've parked your car at night, uh, that's exactly how it will resume first thing in the morning. Uh, so let's jump in and I'll show you. So you still need to, uh, so the car remains locked, so you have to unlock it. And then when you jump in, all you do is you can see there, you actually got to turn the key to sort of bring all the electrics on. So we'll just do that. So all your electrics come to life. And over here, so this is exactly how I turned, or how the air conditioning and the heated seats were set at when I turned the car off and locked the doors. So that has come on exactly how I left it. So as I was saying a second ago before the engine restarted itself, if that's, you know, if you always park your car outside and don't have you know, the opportunity to put it in the garage overnight, you can set all your air conditioning out, put the heater on, heated seats, or the air conditioning if it's in the summer, um, and that's exactly how it will come back on in the morning when you restart the car. So it's just a, a bit of a trick to remember, you know, what setting you want the vehicle to have in the morning. You just leave it like that at night when you turn the car off and lock the doors. Um, and yeah, hopefully it will start to warm the cabin up, put your heated seat on for you. But that's so by the time you get in the car, uh, it's all quite nice and cosy. So there's the video of how to set up and use the new Ford Pass. Uh, app here in Australia. Uh, well, it also covers New Zealand as well, to be fair. Uh, hopefully I've covered everything for you. Um, if you've got any questions that uh, maybe something I've missed 
or just something you want a bit more um, clarification on, uh, you know, feel free to leave some comments or suggestions in the comments below. Uh, I'll come back to you as soon as I can. As I said before, I will leave a list of vehicles that are currently able to use the Ford Pass app, uh, plus also information regarding cars that will be coming soon. Uh, if you have enjoyed the video, please give it a like. Um, and if you want to help support the channel, please subscribe. Uh, and that will also tell you when new videos go live. Um, there's going to be some more interesting stuff coming this year. Um, certainly things like the new Ford Escape, the new Ford Puma. Uh, and knowing Ford, there'll probably be some other stuff coming too. Uh, so stay safe uh, while we've still got this coronavirus uh, situation going on. Uh, thank you for joining me today. And I look forward to seeing you all in the next one.